I wonder what you would miss most. Would it be apples or berries? Maybe tomatoes or exotic fruit like mangoes or avocados, or maybe coffee. All these crops are pollinated by bees. And so without bees, we would not have any of these crops. It's been estimated that approximately one third of the food crops we eat require bee pollination in some form. So that's why everyone is really concerned about declining bee numbers. Now there's been many reasons cited for the decline of bee numbers. It could be the changing habitat, different plants available in the hedgerows, it could be the varroa mite or viruses, or it could be pesticides. Now there have been over 500 tests looking at bee health and neonicotinoid pesticides. It's been shown at a lab scale, really small scale, small number of bees, that yes, there are clear effects from these pesticides. However, at a field scale, the effect of the pesticides is much less clear, and that's where the controversy lies. The European Parliament have decided to take a precautionary approach and restrict the use of these the three neonicotinoid pesticides in particular, imidacloprid, clothiodin, and thymethoxam. In fact, all three have now been either banned completely and only um, imidacloprid can be used in glasshouse or greenhouse production. The effect of the pesticides, these neonicotinoids, on the bees is quite unusual. It doesn't kill the bee necessarily, but affects the foraging success, affects lar larval development. It affects memory even and learning. Now these three neonicotinoid pesticides have slightly different chemical structure to the others in the group and so have been treated separately. So a little bit more about neonicotinoid pesticides. They're one of the most widely used pesticides throughout the world. They've been used on broad acre crops like maize and soya. And their name comes from the fact that they have a chemical structure related to nicotine. Now normally they're used as a seed dressing, so a tiny amount of pesticide applied to the outside of the seed, which is then planted in the ground. So typically you would only need tens of grams of, of pesticide to treat a whole he hectare of field. And this would compare with maybe tens of kilos of pesticide that would be normally applied of an older pesticide um, to a hectare. So in total, there's eight neonicotinoid pesticides, and I'll show a slide of them and their EU status at the end of this presentation. But more importantly, the work on these has caused the EU to look more carefully at bees and to develop a holistic strategy looking at all the possible effects on bee health. And clearly any pesticide that's now getting approved will go through new checks to make sure that they are fully safe for bees and bee health. I hope you found this presentation useful. If you'd like further information, please do get in touch via the website psi-advantage.com and if you'd like information about the pesticide training that we run, again, the information is on the website.